Hey everyone, it's me, X Canadensis. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post a new doll related video almost every single day. And in today's video, I am so, so excited because we are going to be unboxing and reviewing Stitched in Style Frankie Stein. This is the newest generation one styled Frankie Stein doll. And they were an Amazon exclusive and I paid $50 for this one. And I'm really excited to see if they feel worth that price. I think they'll definitely feel more worth that price than a lot of the other generation one styled exclusives since this is one of the cheapest they've released so far. Anyway, this is what the back of the packaging looks like. Very simple packaging, but we are going to be getting this doll right out of the packaging, so I do not mind. Anyway, it says Frankie Stein is stitched together in a look that electrifies. Stitching style with edge, Frankie Stein stuns in a deconstructed couture gown that celebrates the timeless art of tailoring and dressmaking. Reminiscent of a dress mannequin, a halter bustier with top stitching is paired with a ruched overskirt with asymmetric layers of creeperific tulle, accented with a dramatic chain. A gorgeous caged headdress with a crown of needles and matching chain bracelets creates high voltage fashion. Her look is finished with patchwork stilettos and a chic needlepoint heel. Elegant and electrifying, Frankie Stein is perfectly pulled together in a look that will have ghouls falling apart at the seams. Now let's get them out of the box. So the packaging was weirdly difficult to unbox. Like you have to fold these weird tabs outward. I'm not sure why those are there. They've been making it harder and harder to unbox dolls lately for some reason. Stitched in style, Frankie Stein is out of the packaging, and this is what they look like. I am loving this one. This definitely looks like a special edition Generation 1 Monster High doll, so they definitely fit the bill. For starters, they don't really come with extras. They come with the stand, which they're standing on. I'll show it to you later. And they come with a certificate of authenticity. As usual, all I have to say about this is that I desperately wish they would tell us the edition size somehow. I mean, for this doll, this is kind of just a special edition, not necessarily a limited edition, but... I don't know. The certificate's kind of worthless to me, but it is very sweet. You could see who the designer was. This designer also did Vampire Heart Draculaura, and that doll is absolutely glorious, and I'm really, really excited to check out this doll up close. Ever since we finally got to see the stock photos of this doll, I have been so, so excited because I think that this design is super, super cool and very, very Frankie. So, Let's get a closer look at this doll, starting off with their beautiful face. I have been loving the Generation 1 styled Monster High dolls' faces recently, and this doll is definitely no exception. I think Frankie has had a definitely an improvement since the original Generation 1 Frankie faces, but they still like have the spirit of a Generation 1 doll, which I think is super, super fun and cool. Also, I was going to point out that the shines in the eyes are driving me nuts, but it has come to my attention that I think they're doing this on purpose with the special edition dolls, so... I guess it's here to today. For me, I just don't like it because it makes photography weird because it makes them look very artificial and not in like a good way, in my opinion. But it doesn't really bother most people, so it's fine. Anyway, let's take a look at their face. So they don't have a lot of blushing going on, but that's kind of a generation one thing, not to have a lot of blushing, so no big deal. They have a stitch on the cheek, of course, and silver sparkly lips. I really love the metallic paint that they used there. It looks really good, and I wish Generation 3 would experiment with lip colors more because this looks awesome. And then they have these white and black bangs with long pieces framing the face. It's interesting, though, because mine was packaged with this one, like, back here, but on the packaging it shows this specific doll with the both of them, like, up front, but that's why they have the weird crease here. Anyway, I really love the way that they did the eye makeup, too. The... Inner corner makeup is very intense compared to most Monster High dolls. You've got the blue that turns into the gray for the remainder, and I love how much is going on with the bottom lash. There's a ton of bottom lashes. It looks beautiful. And then these really gorgeous thick eyebrows. I want to see what the face just looks like. Wow. Those eyebrows are quite different for Gen 1. Love it. I love when they draw the individual hairs. I think it looks awesome. And the bangs don't seem to have any kind of styling product in them, which is very appreciated because it just means they rooted and styled them properly so you don't have to worry about them moving around too much. Anyway, they have these sewing needle earrings and you can see that there's thread wrapped around and they're the same on both sides. All right. Now it's time to take a look at the rest of the hair. So the hair type is Saran. It's super soft, totally free of styling product too. At least mine is. So that's pretty cool. The extra hair from the bun is kind of just hanging out up here. It kind of looks like a weird mullet and it covers some of the chains. I wonder if that's intentional. I almost wish they'd spiked it up. Maybe I will because that might look interesting, but I'd have to cut it. And I don't know if I want to commit to that. Anyway, this is a huge piece. All of this is connected 
and it's really, really interesting. I feel like we don't get, like, headpieces that come downward usually with the Generation 1 Monster High Dolls, and I think it's a really cool, unique piece. So let's dissect this. First, around the bun, we've got these sewing needles sticking up, so we have, like, a crown of thorns. I like all the <laughs> unintentional... Um, ascensions to godhood they've been doing with monster high lately love it and then the rest of the headpiece is mostly chains you can see these skelet barrettes which are big and chunky but i really appreciate that they're actually attached to the conglomerate here because if they weren't they'd have to have those big uh like like this i don't like how this looks in doll hair because it's very bulky so i like that this is attached because it makes them actually lay flat and then if we move downward we can see that there's extra little details. Also, there's some barbed wire if you see that. So I think these are intended to be little rotary cutters of some sort, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe some kind of surgical tool, and I'll tell you why I think that in a little bit. And then this? Maybe it's supposed to be a big stylized sewing needle. I'm really not sure, but there's two of them. Pretty cool. Love the soft hair, really cool. Also, I think it's really interesting that this doll has all black hair except the bangs and front pieces. It creates a really interesting effect and I like it a lot. Moving on, we can take a look at the outfit. So first I'm gonna show you what the outfit looks like on, then we're gonna start taking off layers so we can see what each layer looks like on its own. So I'm really glad I read the back of the box because it explains that this is meant to look like a mannequin top and I think they really did a good job at that. That is super, super cool, and what a good idea, too, because Frankie's all about this, like, stitch together sort of theme, like, simulacrum, that's what they are, you know? So, this outfit looking like it's actively being put together and is some kind of half-put-together thing on a mannequin is really, really cool, so I love the mannequin top idea. Genius. And then we have a netted piece that goes up to a choker around the neck that is tied with a halter. That looks great. I like that they added that netted portion. I think it really helps the top stand out and keeps the top of the outfit from not being completely overshadowed by the bottom of the outfit, although it still mostly is because the bottom of the outfit is amazing. All right, this spiked arm piece really loves catching all of the saran hair, but it's a really awesome piece. Just look at that. Oh, there's actually two arm pieces. Okay, you've got two totally separate arm pieces. They can be removed if you take off their hand. You can also see the stitches, just like Gen 1. They still have the neck bolts and the stitches. And I really love this, these spiky pieces. These are super cool and quite different from Monster High, too. And I think it's cool that this is an asymmetrical look, too. There's only spikes on one side. I bet that is super uncomfortable, which is kind of how Monster High fashion works, you know? I love it. It's super unrealistic and highly conceptual and super super fun and i love seeing stuff like that with monster high that was always the highlight for me when i was like 14 opening my monster high dolls seeing stuff like this would always get me so excited so i just love that this doll is giving me that impression again super super cool all right now it's time for the skirt so this is a big really really cool skirt and this looks like one of those things where you drape it on your mannequin which is what they're going for and then you can't really get it to look like this when you sew it all together so it's really amazing that they managed to pattern this out and pull it off just look at this it's so so cool so it's like intended to look not messy but like it's pinned all over the place you know but it is all sewn you can see where the stitches are this is such a cool piece so everything is done on what i believe is printed satin and so the backing is going to be quite plain oh is that like a elastic around the waist that's really interesting actually i wouldn't have expected that all right before we look at the skirt, we're going to take a look at this plastic thing because th this chain thing going on, because I want to be able to take off the skirt to show you everything up closer. So what is that? Um, I think this is a pin cushion with big pins hanging out, and that is the start of our chain. So the chain first wraps around the waist, and that's how you can remove it. And we can see more of what I, I'm pretty sure is barbed wire going on or just spiky chains, I'm not sure. And that basically goes all the way around the skirt. And I really like that this was sculpted very specifically to fit around the big gathered pieces of the skirt. I think it's super, super cool. And really, that would have been hard to do, like to actually manufacture that that way. There's not a whole lot of details going on in this. It's mostly just that 
the shape is really unique but there's there's things like I think this is meant to be a string as opposed to this like stitched area here and then you have the spiky chains again this area has two safety pins with skelettes on them I'm trying to find any other things I also love that this is like uneven it's not the same distance throughout um, between each staple I guess which is pretty cool and then down here what are we looking at there's something going on here where they're attaching everything but I'm not sure what that actually is and then this is why I kind of thought that there might be like a surgical tool theme going on because I believe these scissors they could just be thread cutting scissors but they kind of look like the type you would use for doing stitches that's what they remind me of uh, but I could be wrong I'm not a nurse <laughs> I am not a nurse but aren't these so cool and they're made out of a super flexible plastic, just like the rest of this thing is. Also, when you, if you're going to remove this, just know that there are places where it is sewn to the fabric. It should stay just fine afterward, but I'll do it for you guys to show you what it looks like. But just know you might not want to do that. Just make sure before you do it, because you might have to re-sew it. Anyway, underneath the skirt is this tool layer. Oh my god, it's a separate piece. <gasps> I was not expecting that. Look, I think it's a separate piece. Well, we'll see. Oh, that's cool. And look, there's actually tool sewn under there to give it more shape, despite that you can't even see it. I actually really like the color of that tool, though. But it doesn't super match anything else, so I understand. Whoa. Okay, before we go removing layers, let's take a look at their shoes. And please excuse the pieces of hair that are everywhere. That is one of the downsides of Saran is that it sheds a lot. Anyway, these shoes are amazing. These shoes are amazing. Okay, first, measuring tapes with actual graduations i believe these are called like the the little markers for the centimeters or inches isn't that great that is so so cool and they go all the way around super super awesome the shoes have a pointed toe which is pretty unusual for monster heddles i don't know you don't really see it that often for whatever reason and then you can see that it looks like these are maybe like a leather material that's been stitched together a bunch of different times like Frankie put these shoes together from many different shoes which I think is super cool and again matches Frankie's theming really well especially in gen 1 with all of the like sewn together preppy outfits it's so so cute and then I love the way that these strings are holding the shoe together like it looks like it's actively falling apart it's it's just beautiful and you can see what I think is a chain on the back and the heel is a sewing needle with a very large eye would be very hard to use and then I believe there's just a thread kind of wrapped around it to make it cutesy and then this looks like the I don't know how this would work but it looks like these are stitches like they stitched the bottom of this platform to the shoe I don't know how that would work but it looks cool and it's also hollow underneath which is kind of interesting and then the shoes are the same both of them obviously just mirror images of each other uh, which is kind of interesting because they are meant to look like they're being like sewn together and like created from scraps. So uh, I don't know how they would do that. That's impressive. But anyway, super, super cool. All right. Before we start removing layers, this is the stand. It is a saddle stand. I'm not the biggest fan of sta saddle stands, but this one actually works. I was kind of horrified by Vampire Heart Draculaurus because it doesn't work at all. I actually had to take a different stand for her. So I'm relieved that this one actually fits Frankie quite well. It's sized correctly for their platform shoes and I really like the skelet at the bottom. It's a nice stand. All right, now I'm going to remove this plastic thing. I have removed all of the spiky things. So the arm cuffs and the skirt thing. And it's interesting because this was actually stitched onto the skirt in a few spots, specifically these ones. Which makes sense, right? Because they need to be held up there. But honestly, they stay on decently well because of the shape of the outfit. So, but again, don't cut those if you want them to stay perfectly in place and you're picky. But this is what the skirt looks like without those metal thingies. It's obviously not metal, but you know, the... It's supposed to look like chains, I don't know. The big chain accessory. I actually really like them this way, but they definitely look like they're missing something major without the big plastic piece, but... I thought I would show it in case you guys wanted to see it, and this is what the back looks like. The back is definitely not the part that you want to be looking at. It's, I mean, it looks like a half-finished gown, which is exactly what they're going for, so I think it looks super cool. But from the back, it's like, oh, uh, there's definitely something missing here. All right, now I'm going to be taking off this piece so we can take a look at that underskirt, because I'm pretty sure there's an underskirt. I've removed the main skirt, and this is what that looks like separately, by the way. This is such a nice piece, so you can see the way they gathered to create this. I mean, it's so, so nice, and I love that tool layer. It's just, 
really impressive that they did that to create just a little bit more dimension to the skirt and it really pays off i think this is super cool and i think this would be really fun to see different stylings with i especially think it would be interesting to see it used kind of as a traditional bustle like the back of a skirt because that's what it reminds me of especially up up top like that and really easy to take off and put on i was actually worried that it wouldn't be but i didn't even remove the shoes and i managed to take it off so not bad and then this is what the top looks like just if you're curious this is what it looks like alone it's a really cool piece i like it a lot the decorative stitching is very impressive and pretty unusual for mattel honestly so i appreciate seeing it it looks great and then this piece is the i mean i just love that this truly looks like frankie made their own outfit but it's still so monster high like it looks incomplete but in an intentional way i don't know how to explain that what i'm saying is the designers nailed the concept with this one so so cool just different pieces being thrown together and made to work together and it's just so so cool so there's the back of this yeah this is a cool piece i feel like you could find other skirts to pair with this that would create a really interesting look and this is actually a really nice quality tool this is a nicer quality tool like a thinner nicer one but this is actually like not super scratchy not super like thick and plasticky it's actually really nice so yay <laughs> all right now it's time for our final thoughts and that is it for this video i really love this frankie i removed this piece in case you would want to know what the skirt looks like without it don't recommend i mean you could pair this with like leggings or something and make it interesting but i mean it's not meant to be worn alone as you can see definitely needs this this piece <laughs> um that's the like modesty panel but you could do some really interesting things with this i think i think the best thing i would be able to think of is imagine this with something like little shorts how interesting that could be oh look oh god there we go hmm interesting there's definitely a lot you can do with this outfit very versatile i've been really appreciating a lot of these new generation one uh styled monster high dolls that they're doing that have a lot of different layers that you can work with because i and i collected original generation one dolls and i love them a lot but one of the problems is that i feel like there weren't a lot of outfits that were layered like this because most of them just had some sort of mini dress and if there was something cool like say this it would have been sewn on you know they they usually didn't have a lot of layers that you could play around with so they didn't really function as much as fashion dolls but i feel like with these and a lot of the scolectra dolls i've been feeling very empowered to actually change them up and mess around with them obviously this one i'm going to be leaving alone because i don't uh, I don't like any of the little mini customizations I've done. This one is one of the, it feels weird to say more affordable because this doll was quite expensive, but you know, this one is not breaking that $60 price point that the like collectors normally do. I mean, normally they're around 70, but the Skelector Ghoulia doll, I forgot what that doll was specifically called, but that doll was $60, but because you had to buy the $10 membership to get her, so $70 basically. So this doll is definitely more affordable than the other ones. Uh, more like the holiday dolls price but what's exciting about this one to me is that this is just a totally random release similar to vampire heart this doll doesn't go with anything they're not for any kind of special occasion they just decided to release an original style generation one doll uh with as regular of a release as i think they can manage for the generation one monster high dolls i assume retailers aren't picking them up for whatever reason uh i wonder if they could in the future because i would be really interested to see more lines like a new generation one line not necessarily play line i don't know if they can achieve that and i don't expect them to because i know that these are dolls that they're making in lower quantities specifically for collectors and i'm very grateful that they're doing that honestly as an original generation one monster high fan and i love generation three too but it's really cool to be able to add new generation one dolls to my collection especially because when i try to back collect ones that i missed from the past right now the prices are like really high so it's frustrating. So I, I think it's really cool that I can grab these. And I've been really enjoying seeing what the new designers, but also the older designers from Generation 1, there's a lot of them still on the team, uh, what they're coming up with, what they're releasing. I really value them. I think they're really, really awesome dolls. What I specifically would like to see are series. That would be very cool. Like a stitched in style series with like maybe even just the main three characters. I think that that would be really, really special because I don't know, I feel like I have a lot of these one-off releases and they're really cool, but when I build displays, I really like to show like them all together and having a cohesive set is always really fun. Like the um, Haunt Couture Collector dolls, they kind of come in sets, but those are like a completely different thing. Anyway, 
is this doll worth a $50 price point? Honestly, it depends. Do you, if you like really like this one? I, I feel like I don't feel super ripped off by this one. I don't think this doll compares to other dolls that I can purchase at like even like a $30 or $40 price point. Um, but st like design wise, I enjoy this one a lot. So that's, that's it for me. Makes me happy. I really like Generation 1 Monster High dolls and I'm willing to pay a premium to an extent to add more to my collection because I really enjoy them. And yeah, I really hope they do more of these slightly more affordable ones that are also easier to get because to my knowledge, this doll is actually still in stock on Amazon. So pretty cool. They make these ones in much larger quantities, which helps more people be able to get a hold of them. I've been really enjoying the holiday line. So right now there's a Draculaura who I already have and love. I have the Skeleta. I just haven't unboxed her yet. And then Claudine, I believe I have on like back order or something somewhere. I need to double check on that. But I really love that holiday series and I think they're pretty well priced too. Again, they're a little more expensive, but it's because I think anyway, I think it's because they're not produced in as high of quantities because if you produce more of a doll, it costs less per unit. It's just like an economics thing. I don't know. Um, and like, I, like I wasn't the holiday Draculaura priced at like $40. Like that's a pretty good price. I think, I don't know. I really like that doll and I'm loving this one too. I can't wait to see what's next from the generation one monster high team in the new year. It definitely seems like Mattel is giving them more room and more retailers are starting to pick these up. So hopefully we start to see more of them and more exciting concepts brought to the table. I think that this is super fun and we're just seeing like, I, I think the designers are probably just handed the rights. They're like, Hey, you want to design a Frankie doll for Amazon this year? So yeah, we love to see it. Anyway, for all this time, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'd love to know what you think. Do you like this one or is this one a pass for you? Let me know. Bye.